Welcome to Configure Host Profiles, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity and specifically the Velocity Console. Each time you want to move to the next slide, click anywhere on the slide to continue or click on the forward arrow shown here. The host profile defines the settings that the Velocity client should use when attempting to initiate a connection with a specific host. The host profile must include the emulation type, IP address of the host, and the host port. You may configure an unlimited number of host profiles for a smart device, but only one host profile is allowed per project using the Velocity console. When a device user attempts to initiate a session with the host, the Velocity client displays a list of all available host profiles. The user selects the host he wants to connect with, and the Velocity client, using the host profile settings, connects to that host. Depending on the emulation type, different options are available when configuring a host profile. In this module, we will discuss the basic configuration settings, the license server configuration, security and data encryption, Connect Pro settings for session persistence, and then we will talk about the scanner settings. When a device user executes Velocity Client, the initial client window displays a list of available host profiles. The user selects a host he wants to connect with, and the Velocity Client, using the host profile settings, connects with the defined host. One way to create a host profile is through the Velocity Console. Each Velocity project built in the console contains one and only one host profile. When a Velocity project is created, the initial screen that the builder of the project sees is the host profile screen. It can also be reached by clicking on Host from the Velocity console menu. The key to the record stored for the host profile is the profile name. And when creating a host profile, the first step is to give the profile a name. For this training, we will use the host profile Acme Cross Docking. Before you can make a connection with a Velocity client, at a minimum, you must know the host IP address, the host port, and the host emulation type. These are considered the basic configuration options when creating a new host profile. The host address is the address of the host system or intermediate gateway managing connections to the host system. Velocity must know where to connect, so at this point enter the host name or numeric IP address of where you want the client to connect. The host port is the TCP port number on which the host system is listening for the emulation request from the Velocity client. By default, the port is set to 23. When using SSH or use SSH tunnel is selected, the default port is changed to 22. For this connection, the port was left at the default port 23. The host emulation type is the type of session required to connect to your host. Your choices are 3270, 5250, VT220, or Xterm. You can only select one host type per session, and the connection configuration options may change dynamically depending on the host type selected. To select a host emulation type, there is a drop down menu. From that menu, all emulation types will be available for selection. For this connection, the emulation tape type needed is VT220. Once selected from the menu, the new emulation type is placed into the host emulation type field. The next basic configuration setting is default safe mode. To understand this option, you must understand safe mode versus smart mode. Safe mode in Velocity utilizes the traditional black and green screen common to terminal emulation applications. When in safe mode, Velocity's ability to render pages in HTML is deactivated and you navigate through the screens using keystrokes. Smart mode utilizes Velocity's built-in HTML reader to use a theme created in the Velocity console and presents screens with updated screen layouts and styles. The default safe mode toggle is how the user is able to swap between the two modes. The default value is default safe mode set to no. Therefore, smart mode is also considered the default. All screens in this project will run in smart mode unless otherwise changed at the screen level in the project. If you want to run in traditional black and green screen mode, change the default safe mode to yes.
The auto carriage return works this way. By default, it is set to yes. When auto carriage return is set to yes, when a user taps the menu item, an enter return key character is appended to the menu selected. If the auto carriage return is set to no, when the user taps the menu built by the host profile project loaded into the Velocity client, no carriage return will be added to the input. In most cases, the carriage return is needed. Therefore, a setting of auto carriage return equals yes is desired setting as well as the default setting. The screen rotation setting specifies the screen orientations that are supported for the project. The possible values available in the menu are locked portrait, which keeps the screen locked in a vertical position, locked landscape, which keeps the screen in a horizontal position, or dynamic, which uses the orientation that is the best fit based on the angle of the device. This can be helpful for applications built for only one orientation. The default value is dynamic. Velocity can hijack some keys and remap them to perform different functions on the smart device. First, let's look at the Android hardware back button. If you want to change the function of this button, all you need to do is edit the configuration called hardware back button key. To change the key to return a tab character, you use the emulation scan or hex code 0009 in the hardware back button key field. When that button is pressed, the defined key code is sent to the host. The menu up key and the menu down key are configured and function exactly the same as the configuration of the hardware back button. The menu up and menu down buttons are software buttons that are placed to the right and left of the keyboard icon. They will only show up if the screen is found to be a menu. Please note, if any of the button configurations are left blank, those keys will do nothing during the execution of the host application. The Client License Server is an application that provides licenses to ruggedized and smart devices that are using Wavelink's terminal emulation, industrial browser, or Velocity clients. The licenses are stored on a central or reachable PC and therefore can be automatically distributed to any device client that sends out a request. The application is a free software download from the Wavelink Download website and multiple license servers are valid on an enterprise network. The centralized depository of licenses allows for automation of the licensing process and helps stop the duplication of licenses that can happen in the manual licensing environment. The authorization section allows for the Velocity client to be configured to access the license server. There are three configurations that must be set. The license server address tells the device where to find the license server. Enter the IP address of the host license server. If the IP address is not specified, the client will actively send out a broadcast to try to find the server. The license server port is the port the license server is listening for client requests. The default port of the license server at install time is 1820. This field cannot be set until the license server address is specified. The license server site ID is used if the client needs to be pointed to a certain license server on the corporate network. It can be left at zero if only one license server exists. Secure Shell, or SSH, is a cryptographic or encrypted network protocol for initiating telnet sessions on remote machines in a secure way. It allows a smart device to establish a secure channel over an insecure network in a client-server architecture, connecting an SSH application with an SSH server. There is no additional software for SSH on the device, but the host must be configured for SSH. When this option is selected, the auto login user and auto login password fields appear, and the port field is changed to 22. In the known host dialog, enter the trusted keys for the server. This way, the user will not be required to enter or accept the key, and it will be done automatically. An SSH tunnel consists of an encrypted tunnel created through an SSH protocol connection. An SSH tunnel can be used to transfer unencrypted traffic over a network through an encrypted channel. If you are using 5250 emulation with SSH, you must use SSH tunneling. 
When this option is selected, the auto login user, auto login password, tunnel address, and tunnel port fields appear below, and the port field is changed to 22. The Secure Socket Layer, or SSL, is a computer networking protocol that manages server authentication, client authentication, and encrypted communication between servers and clients. There is no additional software for SSL on the device, but the host must be configured for SSL. When this option is selected, the port field is changed to 992. The option cannot be enabled if only use Connect Pro connection is selected. Connect Pro, known in earlier versions as Term Proxy, is designed to extend the life of sessions between Velocity clients and the host. Under normal operating circumstances, a device might go idle, enter power saving mode, or move out of signal range and prematurely terminate the session between the client and the host. Connect Pro serves as software to maintain the session with the host, even if the device goes to sleep or the connection is momentarily lost. This enables the client to seamlessly resume the session without loss of productivity. The first option for Connect Pro is only use Connect Pro connections. Connect Pro, when configured, can be the only connection method or it can be the primary method with a direct connection available on Connect Pro failure. By turning only use Connect Pro connections to yes, you force Connect Pro connections to be the only connection method available. This requires all Connect Pro settings be configured. Also, you cannot select the Use SSL settings in this mode. Connect Pro allows for up to three configured listening sessions. If you configure session one, a tab for session two will appear. And if you configure session two, session three will appear. This gives you flexibility and load balancing when needed. There are two types of Connect Pro servers. The version 3x server, which is for legacy users of the old term proxy, and the Connect Pro 4.x server, which is the current version. The server type field is where the choice of Connect Pro server is made. If you check only use Connect Pro connections above, you must enter a Connect Pro configuration. You will not be able to save your profile if this is not completed. In most cases, version 4x will be selected. Next, the address field is the address of the host computer that has Connect Pro running. To prompt a device user for all or part of the address, use a variable delineated by the percent sign. Variables can be used in DNS names or IP addresses. For example, 172.19.11 dot percent sign store number percent sign. The text that is inside the percent indicators is the information that will appear in the prompt on the device. In the above example, the prompt on the device would ask the user for store number. If the user provides the store number 111, the client attempts to connect to 172.19.11.111. The port field is a port that Connect Pro is listening on. Connect Pro defaults to listening on port 4430, so it is placed in this field by default. That being said, Connect Pro can listen on multiple ports, so the field is variable. The Terminate Connect Pro session field indicates when the server should terminate the connection to the host. The possible values are never. Connect Pro never terminates the session established with the host. The client is responsible for manually terminating the session on network error. The Connect Pro server terminates the session with the host when a network error occurs, such as a loss of network connectivity. On session exit, the Connect Pro terminates the session with the host when the session is terminated by the Velocity client. By default, this option is selected. Always, the proxy server will terminate the session with the host on a network error or when the session is terminated. The client reconnects if unexpectedly disconnect field specifies if the Velocity client will attempt to reconnect the session when the Connect Pro connection is lost and the client has not received a disconnect message from Connect Pro. By default, this is set to yes. 
a reconnect string specifies the reconnect string that the smart device should use when connecting to the host. Alternatively, you may configure reconnect strings in Connect Pro. The data capture area has advanced scanner settings. This enables the ability for the smart device to scan barcodes. Once set to yes, the barcode slash MSR, basic data formatting, decoder settings, reader settings, scan settings, and UPC slash EAN setting tabs appear. These advanced settings allow you to configure the scanner for each host profile. Please refer to the Smart Device Manual to understand what these settings mean for each device. Thank you for listening to the Configure Host Profiles presentation, a module of the Wavelink eLearning training course on Velocity and specifically the Velocity Console. You are now ready to move on to the next module. Wavelink is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Landis Corporation and has offices around the world so there will always be a convenient office near you. If you would like any more information, please contact your Wavelink sales representative or email us at the address sales at wavelink.com.